My name is Diane Kerr and I have the privilege of having the name Auntie as an elder. My mission as an elder of the Wurundjeri and Wurrung people is to educate our young ones, to educate the wider community about us, to tell the true story. It's also about teaching our young ones who they are, their connection to the country, and we welcome people onto our country. The Wurundjeri people are the Wurundjeri Balak clan at the moment. We had six clans, but we're only one clan left. After colonisation, we went down to 26 people. Now we're near the thousand. We come from the lady by the name of Annie Borat, who is the sister of William Barak. So we all come from one lady and we're all blood related. Certain times of certain years, certain times of your age, you had ceremony. That was broken when my grandmother was on the mission. We we're trying to reinvigorate those ceremonies, revive them. We do coming of age for the women. We do baby naming ceremonies. We do smokings for ourselves as well as for outside people. We go down to Dites Falls, which is the confluence of the Mary Creek and the Birrung, the Yarra, and I do it right on the water's edge. There's a special place you can walk in. You can see the river. Also here at the convent, we've done smoking ceremonies for events that have been here. Near the gum tree, we've done smoking as well on convent days. It was the first time girls had sang in language here. Singing in language is very healing. I mean, I don't know my language. It was taken from us, but we are learning. We now have a language program. So hopefully within the next five years, we'll be able to speak our language. This is traditional land, Aboriginal land. We're inviting you politely to take care of it, not to harm waterways, and not to harm any bulbooks, which is our children. I love that I get to start with a story in that piece and then it goes to someone else and is worn on the body and they add their story and meaning to it. I would want people to feel cherished and seen and understood when they wear a piece of my work. Coming up with a concept doesn't actually start with me. It starts with the intent of the person before they get to me. people coming with the idea of a legacy in mind. They're really thinking about not just what they want now, but how it will translate to their children and their children's children. And that's been a real privilege to be part of that process. My name is Catherine Leopold Cedar. I'm a jeweler, a gold and silversmith, and an artist. My name is David Booth and I'm an artist. I also use the name Ghost Patrol. I do a bunch of different things and have done over time. So I paint murals, I paint for galleries, I, I draw a lot, I make animations and sculptures, all kinds of things, but it all kind of starts here. I was born in Tasmania and so I grew up there and went to school there and that's had a major impact on my connection to nature been drawing in similar ways since I was a child and I'm really just creating my own world through my drawings and so that gives me a lot of flexibility to draw real things or imaginary things. In the last maybe few years I've been mainly focused on plants and yeah, Australian animals. Most of those ideas start in my sketchbook. They're all rough ideas that I collect over time. I like to use a lot of different materials. If I concentrate too much on one material, then it could get boring, and I find when I switch around materials, it informs the other materials, and really, I'm just playing and experimenting a lot. I feel really lucky to have a studio at the convent. It's a beautiful space. Just the animals and the plants, and the seasonal change in the grounds here is, is really beautiful. 
I feel very lucky to live my life as an artist. I love the opportunity to open my studio and invite people in and share and be transparent about who artists are and what they do and show my process and to show what goes on here. It's not a mystery, it's just a person with a bunch of pencils. I feel like that's part of my giving back to the community is too. My name's Ilona Tripasani. I'm Colin Hopkins. We're here at the Abbotsford Convent today. This is our studio that we set up about 10 years ago. All our work is handcrafted and it's based on the Japanese tradition of wheel thrown ceramics. We use a lot of traditional techniques and then apply those into a more modern design, I suppose. So it's always this kind of beautiful balance between a traditional craft and a, a modern design. I left school and studied jazz piano. That was sort of my first incarnation. My dad's an architect, so I went and did a bit of work in his office and got convinced to go back and do the architecture course for a while. And then in 2006, went to Japan and just fell in love with the ceramics. I just see ceramics as, a, as the ultimate blend of architecture and music. I come from a family of makers. When I was growing up, we didn't have huge amounts of money, so we made a lot of things. So it was kind of that combination of being a little bit thrifty and a little bit creative that kind of really pushed me into ceramics pottery. Pottery does teach you patience. Mm. The whole ceramic tradition is about trying to bring people together through food and through ceramics. We found the best way for people to engage with our studio is through the classes. Especially being part of the Abbotsford Convent, people like the idea of being involved in that arts community. So the classes have been the easiest and the strongest way to, for us to be able to communicate what it is that we do and the aspects of the, the skill behind the work that we make. We've also made some really good friends. Yes, we yeah, have. <laughs>I started writing when I was very young and the first thing I wrote was a Star Wars sequel when I was about 11, 12, I think. The novel's not going to write itself, you just got to sit down and sort of stare at the blank page and try and come up with ideas and um, all art begins in daydreaming. It's this sort of sense of possibility of wondering what if this happened or what if that happened or what if I met a person who was like this or that. I feel like it's a great privilege to be in a position to be a writer and have an imagination and to have discovered something that is important to me. I mean, I think one of the great attributes to being a writer or being an artist in general is kind of endless curiosity about the world and the people. My name's Chris Womersley and I'm a story writer. Printing is a fantastic medium. It's very tactile. It's imperfect. You can repeat things over and over. It's not mass produced. It's not one off. It sits somewhere in the middle and it's a combination of creative and technical. We like the perfection of the imperfection. It's good to see the little bits that make it obvious it's handmade. Spindle's been around for 13 years and our focus is on the design and production of ethical and sustainable textiles. We print onto eco linen and hemp organic cotton. We try to source fabric from ethical mills. We use water-based, non-toxic, sustainable inks. Many of our designs are inspired by plants in the convent grounds. There's a huge silky oak tree which is featured in some of our prints. We benefit from each other's input. And I feel like we have complementary skill sets as well. So we kind of balance each other out and that's really nice. I'm Lara. And I'm Caitlin. And we're Ink and Spindle. Most of the time when people walk by these paintings, they automatically assume that they're photographs that have been transferred to the glass until they realize what's involved in the process, that they kind of do a double take. 
My husband and I went on this trip to Italy to Lake Como, and the owner of the villa had a collection of 17th century reverse glass paintings, and the feeling was just electric. And I was like, okay, great, I'm gonna figure out how to paint in reverse on glass. But the problem is, is that the technique fell out of fashion in the 1800s. So when I tried to find advice or guidance on how to do this process, there isn't any. And the first attempt was an absolute disaster. I remember kind of throwing the piece across the wall. I realized that to come at it with a super cerebral, planned out approach wasn't gonna work. So the process has become much more intuitive. It really was a, a self-taught process. It requires a lot of precision. When you apply the paint to the back of the glass, once it dries, if you try to add more to the back, you won't see it from the other side. There's no room for error. Majority of my influences are found in science, but I wanted to pursue them aesthetically. And so I took the constellations of the zodiac, and then a cellist that I've been collaborating with played the stars as though they were music notes. The size of the star would determine its volume, the distance between stars, and that determined the note's length. What I found was this incredibly complex and nuanced system. It made me a lot more empathetic. It's simply just a system that we've devised to make sense of chaos. My name is Jennifer Witten. My practice is in reverse glass painting. Fast fashions never really suited me. They never looked how I wanted them to look. I was carrying all these different things that changed like from day to day and over time. And I just couldn't find what I needed that really met my needs. Making and wearing my own stuff makes me feel more like, like me, like I'm not pretending to be somebody else. It's what you see is me. I try to put a lot of thought into my design so that when people are using products, it's a lot more effortless for them to carry all of their essentials every day. I met Rachel in the year 2000. She was my boss for a couple of years and we've just stayed friends. We've always talked about having a creative space together and have ended up having a studio here at the convent. It's really nice when people come into the studio and they can see Tessa's beautiful clothes and have a look at the bags as well. It's just is quite symbiotic. My name's Tess Kelly. I'm Rachel Quay. I make leather goods under the brand name of Behold. I design and make all the clothing for my brand, the Slow Fashion Studio here at the convent. When I was a kid, I'd go play in the dam and it would be squishy, but then when it would dry up, it would be these hard bricks that I could make something a bit more permanent out of. So I was drawn to pottery because of clay. Clay comes from essentially eroded mountains and they flow down rivers and end up underground and we dig that up and then we make something else which is essentially creating a cycle. And I think there's something kind of beautiful in that. I aim to make work with an element of timeless restraint, so generally functional pieces, things that someone can cherish and take care of. So I try to keep a balance between making something feel delicate but still be robust enough for everyday use. Having a studio in the convent, it's a blessing to be honest, and having an environment where I can work and then walk my dog along a river is pretty special and privileged. My name is Matthew and I make pottery under the name Ghostwares. I had this naive idea that a picture could make a difference. I was initially drawn to photojournalism after seeing an exhibition by Henri Cartier-Bresson when I was about 16. I started at the age in the mid-80s, I was a photojournalist. When I'm photographing, I'm not thinking about anything else. I love the way photography really grounds you in the here and now. If I have an emotional response when I take it, that translates to the viewer. I remember spending a week in the Royal Children's Hospital. They were desperately short of funds and they had some of the top heart surgeons. 
they used one of the photographs from that series as a fundraiser and ended up raising a lot of money. It's really wonderful when an image can touch people. They seem to resonate with people even across cultures. I'm not looking for anything special. I really just like taking pictures of ordinary everyday things and trying to be attuned to the beauty of that. My name's Helga Selvi and I'm a documentary photographer. What really brought me into pattern making and designing is the ability to harness these tools, clothing, with my hands. Being growing up as queer in a country town, it allowed me to play with fantasy as a way of reconciling my own identity and I guess to reconcile who we are as humans on the inside. I would describe the work that I do at The System as quite playful, intersectional, but also quite serious in the way in which I execute it. I didn't realise how rich my own perspective could be through community engagement until I really got here at the convent and had people come into my space. My name's Jack Hancock, I'm a fashion designer and pattern maker here at the Abbotsford Convent. My lighting design practice connects to my love of the night. I've always loved the shades, the shadows, the way in which um, the entire world is transformed into this kind of eerie half-light. MAVEN is actually an acronym for Mesh Networked Audiovisual Interactive Node. In this particular installation, I hope to evoke the sensation that you might have when uh, walking through a field of cicadas or moving through a forest surrounded by fireflies or in a swamp surrounded by chorusing frogs. People don't traditionally think of computer programming as an art form. So if you think of a painter, painting is like me developing software as a functional product. My focus is on creating new forms of expressions through technology and looking at the intersection of humans and machines and the interaction between the two. My name is Pierre Prosky and I am an electronic media artist. I would describe my work as layered, sometimes complex. I think my things are line and colour. Line gives you expression, gives you energy, gives you movement, and I think that's what you want to feel in a piece of work. Art was my little escape. I generally paint objects singularly, anything from people and animals and still life objects, anything every day. If I ever came back in the afterlife, I want to come back as a bird so that I can fly and soar. And I think that's what the convent gives me. The next closest thing is this sense of freedom and self-acceptance and honouring my talent. I'm Maggie and I'm a multidisciplinary artist. And thou hast it now. King, Cordor, Glams, all as the weird women promised. The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. When I was at high school, a theatre troupe arrived and it was a team of players that came in and they performed some Shakespeare and I'd never seen it before. It was a rough style, it was extremely entertaining and the way they communicated was just brilliant. And there were kids in that audience who weren't particularly engaged at school at all and all of a sudden they were seeing things and enjoying things in a different way and I was one of those. I created Complete Works Theatre Company, bringing the actors together to give young people that experience that I had. We want our theatre to be an exciting experience for students because we want it to be a fun way to learn. There's such a joy when you get on stage and you see some really meaty text being performed so brilliantly. 
We make sure that we're having a great time in rehearsal. They don't feel like they're being lectured to, they feel like they're enjoying an experience. We keep our students engaged by clever staging. Simple staging, but also with modern references as well. You know, why study these old plays? But the themes in these plays, ambition, greed, what happens when we go too far with those parts of our nature, it can be completely relevant to the world today. We are still the same people. Arts are so important to humanity. It's inspiring for me that knowing that the work that we do may inspire young people to get involved in the arts and to contribute their voices to the arts. Use the past to feed the present to create new work for the future. My name is Andrew Blackman, I'm the Artistic Director of Complete Works. My name is Sarah Clark and I'm the Production Manager at Complete Works. The origin story of Cairns is that my uncle ran a bar at the convent and during the time that I was working for him became quite good friends with a lot of the artists. At the time had a real passion for bringing together people around music and art, so I built a gallery. There needs to be spaces that allow them to collaborate, converse. There's nothing like bringing people together over food and then over time the restaurant emerged out of this kind of gallery concept. Cam and I are best friends as well as co-workers. Inspiration-wise, we just look at what we want to eat at home and what we would be happy to serve our friends in a dinner party situation. We're very seasonally driven. We like to keep things pretty fresh and pretty simple. Just get good fruit and vegetables in and put them on a plate and make taste good and let them shine. Convent is an incredible place to work and because of all of the lush gardens around, all of you are surrounded by green, essentially. Beautiful wildflowers growing along there. We pick wild fennel from the side of the river. It is a really beautiful way to start a day. Sometimes we have people who are writers who are going through that kind of creative phase and just are spending more time at the cafe or pulling those bits together, having conversations. There's this real energy running a restaurant that you know that you're helping people. I think we just want customers to feel happy and cared for, nourished and how you want to feel when you leave a restaurant. I'm Jules and I'm the head chef at Cam's. I'm Cam and I'm the owner and founder of Cam's at the Abbotsford Convent. <laughs>